Welcome to ITK Barcamp. Here we are going to continue our series of introduction to C++ programming. Today we are going to talk about macros and how they are used in C++. So let's start by creating a directory to put our exercise. Enter that directory and uh, we create an initial program. So let's call it a macro example one. And we uh, start by uh, including the header of the classes that will manage streams. So this is uh, to enable us to write messages to the console or to the terminal. Uh, we use the, the typical entry point, so the main function uh, is going to return an integer. So we can already put a return value for it, so return zero. Okay, so a common way of using macros in this case uh, is to use them as a way of creating a name for a symbol. Um, the macro is defined with the preprocessor uh, word uh, pound define. And here we are going to create a symbol called number of cows. And we assign to it the value 42. The way we use that symbol in the code, uh, for example, we can print that symbol to the console or the, or the terminal. So we use the uh, stdcout class that will send that message to the screen and uh, we finish with the end of line for it. Let's compile this and run it. So we invoke the C++ compiler and we instruct it to put the output in a file that is called macro example. The compilation goes well, there is no uh, error messages or warnings, and now we can execute macro example and we get our number 42. So this is a convenient way of creating a name uh, for a number. Um, traditionally this has been preferred to the other practice, the bad practice of just um, inserting numbers in the code uh, like this. So having just this 42 number in there doesn't I convey the idea to the next developer that this number is associated to the number of, co of cows in the program. Uh, so this is the reason why traditionally macros have been used this way. Um, uh, this is how they have been used in C for a long time. Now with the modern versions of C++, the introduction of the const um, modifier for variables um, has been the preferred method of using this. So in general, instead of using macros in order to define symbols like this, the preferred practice today is to do the following, is to do const So um, instead of a macro, we actually use a variable that happens to be defined as a const. So we replace that line there. And the advantage of doing it this way is that the compiler will know that the number of cows is a variable, it has a type, and therefore it has a certain number of behaviors and operations that it should respect. So as you are compiling, the compiler will help you uh, make sure that you are using this variable the way you were expecting. Uh, let's compile this. Oh, uh, this is an error. Um, I didn't put the equal sign in front of the assignment to the variable. So the macro doesn't need an equal sign, but the assignment of variables do need an equal sign. We compile again, this time it's happy, and we execute the program, we get our number 42. And the place where you will notice the difference between using a macro or the declaration of the variable uh, will be, for example, if we were comparing this to a number. So let's try doing this. If I do number of cows, uh, is it different from minus one? And we compile this code here, so we are going to get 
uh, and if we add the requirement for warnings, we get a message that tells us that we are comparing um, one variable that is signed against another variable that is not signed, and that comparison by is, is poorly defined. So in this case, we are taking advantage of the, the typing of those variables to essentially illuminate some errors in the code. Notice that I have to add the compilation flag wall. This uh, enables a series of a collection of warnings uh, to the compiler. It's uh, highly encouraged that you use the wall warnings in order to have cleaner code. If you go back to uh, the code here, if we have defined that variable by being a macro, we will not get the benefit of that message. So if we were using this definition and we compile, um, we have another error, line number 29. This is something different than what I was trying to demonstrate. Let's look at what it is. Uh, we leave this semicolon here. Um, this is actually an interesting example of how things can go easily wrong with macros. Um, by error, I left this semicolon at the end of the expression, and what happened then is that the the entire symbol number of cows is going to be replaced with that expression. So, what the compiler is actually going to see is this: is 42 semicolon, and the error that we are observing is the result of the compiler. Uh, looking at this expression and finding that it's inconsistent, that we open a parenthesis and we are uh, closing the, the sentence. Um, so this actually illustrates some of the risk of using macros and why they are uh, harder to maintain and hard to debug, is the fact that they are replacing expressions before the compiler gets um, the turn to look at those. Okay, now that I corrected that semicolon that should not have been there, we can uh, see again the, the expression. And um, notice that there is no warning about the fact that we are comparing uh, 42 again minus 1. So the notion that the number of cows should have been an unsigned integer is not expressed here in the program. Mm. Therefore, this is one of the reasons why instead of using uh, the pound define, you want to go with uh, the const unsigned int type of expression, where now you have an equal sign and a semicolon at the end. Uh, of course, if the variable was supposed to be float or a string, then uh, you're supposed to use the, the appropriate type here. Okay, so this concludes our session for today. Thank you for listening.